Hello. In this video, I'm going to walk you around Superagos after running the system for the first time. The underlying theme is how Superagos works with data, the heart and soul of successful trading. When the system loads for the first time, you are left with this screen split in half. But before diving into the front end, let's go and take a look at what's going on at the terminal app. 30 to 60 seconds after the system is fired up, several processes are started automatically. Those processes are bots, and they run independently from the front end. The first one to get up and running is a sensor bot, and its mission is to extract raw market data from exchanges. The rest are indicator bots. They process raw data into elaborate data sets. Those data sets may be anything, meaning all sorts of information deriving from price and volume data for any period. If you take a closer look at the terminal window, you will see that the second column shows the name of the exchange from which data is being downloaded. The last two columns show the progress, that is, the daytime that is currently being processed and the percentage of the task that has been completed. You're probably thinking that reading this terminal window is a painful thing to do, and you're right. Thankfully, you don't need to do any of that. Superalgos provides a comprehensive and intuitive visual environment to manage the whole operation. So let's go back to the front end app. The Superalgos interface features two distinct spaces. The one on top, with a white background, is the charting space. The one in the bottom, with a black background, is the design space. Pulling the slider up or down gives you a full view of either of these spaces. The charting space shows the charts, which feature market data, indicators, and eventually, the actions of trading strategies. This is the section of the system in which you monitor markets and analyze the progress and results of your strategies. We set up these charts as examples so that you can get a quick start using SuperAlgos. Once you get acquainted with the basics, you'll be able to set up your own charts. As you can see, all the charts seem to be empty. This is because candles are not processed until the sensor bot finishes fetching the whole market history for select pairs. For demonstration purposes, we have set up the initial workspace to load a few markets from Binance, Bitfinex and Bittrex. Hey, nice! We've got some candles already, beautiful! Let's go and check what's going on under the hood. I mean, in the design space. Think of the design space as the control room of the system. This is where you manage every aspect of your data, your trading strategies, your infrastructure, and the overall behavior of the system. The first thing you see when you open the design space is the icon representing the workspace. The workspace is the body of information managed by the system. Every data structure in the form of strategies, the configuration of different parts of the system, operational settings, and the relationships among them live within the workspace. Let me make a quick pause. I want to let you know that as we go deeper into the system, I will be going into deeper explanations about how things work under the hood. Sometimes I will touch on issues that career traders will appreciate. I may also get into technical aspects that developers or data scientists will be interested in. You don't need to fully understand those matters to use the products but I hope the details will be interesting anyway. Okay, back to the screen. Right-clicking anywhere on the design space opens the design space map. The map is a miniature of the design space. As you can see, there seem to be several entities distributed in some sort of grid. The dot in the middle is the workspace. The rest of the entities are the heads of different hierarchies. Let's click on one of them the one in the bottom. This is the SuperAlgos network hierarchy. If we hover the mouse pointer over the icon, a menu pops up. The expand button on the bottom left corner expands the hierarchy. As you can see, the system has got rather slow. I will explain why later on. Let's first take a minute to explain a few basic concepts I've just mentioned. I said before that the system handles all sorts of information market information, trading intelligence, information concerning the operation of the system, and many other concepts. 
All of this information is compartmentalized in small data structures called nodes. That is, a node is a small data structure containing information. Each node is visually represented by an icon on the design space. Nodes that are related due to the nature of the information they manage are usually chained together in what we call structure of nodes. As such, information is organized in hierarchical structures of nodes. What we have in front of us right now is the network hierarchy. The network node is the parent node in the hierarchy. When we expanded the hierarchy, we made the underlying structure visible so that we may interact with it. Each node in the hierarchy may have any number of offspring. See the tiny dots flowing from node to node? They represent the flow in the relationship among nodes. The node where the flowing dot originates is the parent of the node it flows to. So, a hierarchy is the representation of an overarching top-level concept resulting in a long chain of nodes, usually with many ramifications. The system manages several hierarchies. You'll learn about them as we move on. What we just covered is the basis of the SuperAgos paradigm and the way SuperAgos connects a visual environment with the information the system manages. All concepts handled by the system are organized and presented similarly. Okay, let's get on with checking what the bots are doing. If we move down the hierarchy, we find the My Computer Network node. This node represents the local machine in what may eventually become a network of machines that may be managed from within the local instance of SuperAgos. The network is not implemented yet, but will be in the not so distant future. One of the branches in the structure is the data mining node. This is where the whole data mining operation is managed. See the status notice indicating that three out of three exchange tasks are running. Notice how the data mining node features three offspring, each representing the data mining operation on a different exchange. Also, each featuring a status notice indicating how many task managers are running. Let's expand the Binance node to access the task managers. As indicated on the Binance node, two out of six task managers are running. A task manager is a device used to organize and control any number of tasks, which in turn control bot instances. You use a task manager to start or stop several tasks at the same time. Now, see how each task manager indicates how many tasks are running. Also, notice the name of the task managers. Masters BTC USDT, Sparta BTC USDT, Masters ETH BTC, Sparta ETH BTC, and so on. So, each task manager works with a specific market within the exchange. Masters and Sparta are two open source data mines shipping with the system. A data mine is a hierarchy that contains definitions of bots, including the trading bot, sensors, indicators, and plotters. These definitions make up the actual programs of such bots, their source code. Are you starting to see how SuperAgos manages information? This is a good example. The bots running on the data mining section of the network hierarchy are instances of bots defined in data mines. Let's take a look at those bot instances. A task manager may handle several tasks, and each task handles one bot instance. The first one here is the sensor bot. The rest are indicator bots, processing the sensor's data or the data created by other indicators. We have candle volumes, stair patterns, Bollinger bands, percentage bandwidth, and Bollinger channels and subchannels. Take a look at the status notice in yellow letters. These bots are waiting for other bots to do the work so that they may do theirs. This means that bots may depend on other bots. Indicators use other bots' output, that is, the data other bots produce as their input. In other words, they read data produced by other bots, perform additional calculations, and produce a new output that other bots may consume. Let's go back and take a closer look at the sensor bot. It says it's fetching 200,000 plus OHLCV, that is, 
open high, low, close, and volume data from Binance's BTC USDT market corresponding to the 6th of March 2018, and it says that represents 21% of the task. This means the SensorBot is still extracting historic market data from the exchange. Now, let's see what Candles Volumes is up to. Right, Candles Volumes is waiting for the sensor to finish the job. That is the reason why Candles Volumes show no progress yet. And it's also the reason why we didn't see any candles on the Binance charts earlier, remember? Now, we did see a few candles in the charts on the left-hand side of the charting space, right? This one on top is a demo chart featuring the BTC USDT market from three different exchanges on the same chart, but it's currently showing one set of candles only. This other chart at the bottom is a demo showing two different markets from Bittrex. So it seems that the bots working on Bittrex have already processed candles and volumes. Let's go and see how that looks in the data mining operation. By the way, I never got to explain why the system may get slow, but you may have guessed it already. It's simply because many processes are running simultaneously. Each bot processing data consumes resources from the machine, mostly CPU resources. However, it's important to clarify that you're not always going to be running the data mining operation. For example, if you're designing a strategy, backtesting, setting up charts, or performing any sort of system configuration, you do not need to have your data mining operation running at all. The situations in which you need a live data feed are mainly active market monitoring and trading sessions that involve interacting with the exchange, such as paper trading, forward testing, and live trading sessions. If you're serious about automated market monitoring or automated trading, you will have those sessions running on a separate, dedicated machine. Okay, so here we are on the Bittrex data mining operation. As you see, Bittrex has a lot more markets installed. However, only three of them are running. Let's look into the BTC USDT market task manager. See? The sensor bot is already at 100%, and so is the candles volumes indicator. That is why we saw Bittrex candles on those demo charts. So what's going on? Why is Bittrex processing data so much faster than Binance? It could be many things. For example, exchanges control and set limits to the bandwidth they allow each API connection to consume. However, that is not the case here. Let's see how much historic data was the sensor configured to extract from the exchange. The start date is January 2015. Well, that would be nice, especially if you wanted to run extensive bug tests. But the truth is that Bittrex only allows downloading a certain backlog of historic data, somewhat around one to three weeks depending on the market. So the sensor bot queried the exchange for data starting on January 2015, but it only got the last few weeks. On the other hand, Binance allows fetching historic data from the start of each market. In the case of BTC USDT, that goes back to September 2017. That is why the Binance sensor hasn't finished yet. All this will be clearer when we look at the charts. On this side of the charting space, we set up a few Bittrex charts with different markets, three of which must have been processed already. There you go. Candle starts popping up on each of the charts as the corresponding plotters read the datasets output by the data mining bots for the first time. If we zoom into the BTC USDT chart, we can see that the time scale is in automatic mode. So it's showing the complete data set. And as you can see, it starts on March 13th and ends on the 24th, barely 10 days. Good. So we're going to let the Binance bots run for a while longer and come back in a few minutes to see what happens when the sensor bot completes its task. We're back with the sensor bot working on Binance, and it's on the 99% mark of the task. The candles volumes indicator is still waiting. The sensor now hit the 100% mark and started saving to disk the data it got from the exchange. As soon as it finishes, the candles volumes indicator should start processing the raw market data and turning it into candles and volumes for each time frame supported by the system. There you go. Candles Volumes is no longer waiting. It's running now. 
the sensor bot is still active. Its current job is connecting to the exchange every 60 seconds to keep a live data feed. That is the normal state of the data mining operation once all historic data has been processed and it remains like this until you decide to stop the processes. Now we see that Candle's volume started reporting on the progress. What are the rest of the indicators doing? Let's see. Well, Stair Patterns is waiting for Candle's volumes to finish processing candles. And Bollinger Bands is also waiting for Candle's volumes. Good. How about Bollinger Channels? It seems to be waiting for Bollinger Bands to finish, as it requires using the Bollinger Bands dataset as input to calculate its own data set. This means that indicators may be nested and may feed on each other's output. I'm sure developers and data scientists can see how powerful this infrastructure is. You can have any number of bots producing standardized data sets, nesting processes to keep adding value to the information others have produced. For systematic and algorithmic traders, this means that strategies may consume pre-processed information, thus tap into a limitless pool of intelligence readily available in all time frames for any market and from any exchange. Okay, so those are the master's indicators. Let's take a quick look at the Sparta tasks. They too are waiting for Candle's volumes to finish. So let's do just that. We'll wait a bit and come back when all indicators are at 100%. Okay, this is it. The data mining operation is up to date, with all master's bots running at 100%, that is, on a live data feed. Let's check the Sparta bots. They too are at 100%. Great. So this is what we were hoping for. We want to have enough historic data from Binance to run a backtesting session and learn a bit about how SuperAlgos handles simulations. We can now stop the whole data mining operation. If we look at the terminal app right now, we should be able to see the task server stopping all the data mining tasks in all of the exchanges. It may take up to a minute for processes to stop graciously. To preserve data integrity, it's important not to close the terminal or stop the task server when processes are running. We can see some of the task managers stopping already. Binance just came to a halt, and that's it. Everything is quiet now. Let's go and take one last glimpse at the charts. Good. We can now see the Bitfinex on the Binance charts for the BTC USDT market. To the right, we set up a few charts that we're going to use later on when we run a backtesting session. They are configured to show the BTC USDT market from Binance so they should start showing the information already. There you go. They are now starting to show candles and Bollinger Bands. Okay, we'll leave it there for the time being. The next video teaches you about the charting space, so that you may move around and start playing with the charts. Don't miss it. <laughs>